Hey everyone, so this is a follow-up video on, again, talking about the new Canon 5D Mark III. This is not it, it's the Canon 5D Mark II, it's an old version. So, uh, so the big announcement was March 1st, the Canon 5D Mark III was announced and, you know, just a lot of people, they look at the headlines and they see the top specs uh, about the camera and then they see the price and you know the, the, some people can be very unhappy with it. I'm, I'm unhappy with the price but uh, the specs, the, again the more I'm learning about it and I think if you're in a certain stage of of uh, using your camera especially for video um, you have a little bit of practice you, um, you'll start to know certain things and features that um, maybe the average person uh, this you know, they're focused on their camera phone uh, are not going to catch so if you look at just the spec the high-level consumer specs it just seems to be an incremental update it's not that uh, amazing I mean specifically it has 22.3 megapixels to it which is not the largest set of megapixels out there I mean there's an the new Nikon D800, I think is 36 megapixels, megapixels. And even Nokia put out a cell phone this week that I think it had like uh, 42 megapixels to it. We're not in a megapixel race anymore. It's 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 not the quantity of pixels, it's the quality of pixel pixels. So that doesn't concern me too much. The other big headlines was the uh, six frames per second uh, shutter speed. So you can, if you're a sports photographer, you can uh, knock out a lot of frames really fast. Six per second, in fact. Uh, and then it's the higher ISO, ISO setting. So it means you can do better at night, shoot better at night, and have something to focus on. Just the low light capabilities are going to be much better in the new version. Those two things are great, but then the added in probably the most the highest profile feature is the 61 point autofocus uh, setting. You're, you're coming from nine autofocus points on this thing all the way up to 61, which is the same. It's the same uh, setup uh, focusing method as the Canon 1DX, which is several thousands of dollars uh, more than the 5D3. And of course, you have the new processor coming out, and there's a handful of uh, nifty features like built-in HDR and all those things that you know those that are nice, but they're not. Uh, I don't. I don't think they're necessarily camera selling features. They're they're nice to have, and at this level of you know competition, you just kind of have to have those things as well. But I think what the real hidden technology advantage is are that um, the compression methods, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but the compression methods are so much more efficient. The quality of the video is expected to be much better. I mentioned that the variable bit rate could be as high as 91 uh, uh, megabits a second. So what that means is that uh, the higher the, the megabit per second, the higher the quality, um, typically your, your file size can be bigger, but um, with the compression it should retain a lot of quality without making the file size ultra big. Just to give you some scale what the 91 number means, your common Blu-ray player would have a variable bit rate up to, uh, the encoded content would have a variable bit rate up to uh, 40 uh, megabits per second. A DVD would be 9.8. You're streaming Netflix or Amazon, at least from what I could tell for a couple of years ago, the uh, variable bit rates were easily less than five, and what I saw was less than 3.5 megabits per second. So you're watching your Netflix um, or Amazon at 720p, some content at, at uh, 1080p, and you have a variable bit of 3.5, versus, again, the Canon, a variable bit rate of 91. So the quality is supposed to be uh, tremendous. It actually, um, again, it has the two compression settings, all I, iframe, for the longer version of 
it's all eyes for the short and then I frame is the uh, looks like the good high quality compression setting and then um, there's another one on there and I, I'm not going to pretend that I know all about uh, that I just can tell that comparing this to another uh, set of Canon cameras that are more movie oriented uh, C300 in their 1DX um, they're using some of those high-end compression settings that are in those much more expensive cameras that have also built in uh, digital time code so if you've ever seen kind of raw video of uh, you know a time tracking on, on, on the video this helps sync up your video with other video um, it can help you give you another option for syncing up um, multi-clip tracks for example it, it's just one of those other little features that help with the video uh, there it's not confirmed yet but it seems like it does have an HDMI out port. Of course, it has that. But is it uh, is it uncompressed or clean, as they say on the internet, or uh, is it uh, uh, compressed and then um, you know, cut down a little bit? It seems though as though that it is. I've read different things, but it seems though you at least get 720p out of the HDMI channel. Um, there's another report of it 1080p but you still get the uh, screen over overlays uh, that you would have what does that mean to me specifically for the dude shooting this video on a crappy Microsoft <laughs> web camera <laughs> nothing immediately I mean that's not something I would use immediately but for professional movie making that's very important um, if you wanted to add this at an LCD to this for faster or more accurate follow focus um, that's something that I, I could see using in the future if the screens were a little bit more cheap or inexpensive um, so that that's that's good it's kind of becoming becoming a, a standard or a heavily requested feature um, and then another the thing not ideal but it's better than nothing it's the it's the the ability to shoot 60p, 60 frames a second, but at 720p, so it's not full HD, but you get the seven, sorry, the 60p, which means that you can, by more frames, you can shoot slow motion video uh, in a better quality format. So that's what that is. And then on top of that, you have the real time audio monitoring, so I could adjust the audio levels with the slider wheel on back without uh, recording any any uh, you know fiddling with the camera you can monitor the audio through headphones that's something I can see see using um, occasionally get pops of uh, sound in, in the video um, so it's those little features that make it just a little bit more nice for people doing a lot of video um, I think mine is great for doing it's overkill for YouTube videos, but you know I, I think people like the quality when I do use this camera. Um, it, t it does take a lot of uh, practice, and I'm by no means an expert with it. I'm excited about what's coming out in the 5D3, um, so stay tuned. I know it's uh, pretty pricey, and this video is for a select audience, kind of camera junkies or video professionals. But uh, exciting times. Later.